I, it's, it's been an interest. It's been a very interesting uh, week and um, the reaction of the observer has been hilarious. I'll say <laughs> well, hilarious before, to me. before we, before we even get to the Vince story, just want to wish uh, best luck to uh, Jim Ross as he's still dealing with his uh, absolutely his situation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he had surgery um, on his hip for cancer, and um, he's, you know, hurting, and uh, hopes he hopes he can get out of the hospital by Sunday, and uh, we wish the best for him. And uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so, um, you know, I mean, there's uh, so, so much stuff going on. I mean, since it's it's amazing how much has happened since we last talked. Yeah, no, and and you know, when we had talked, it was really. Vince, I mean, hadn't was, even, I, Vince hadn't I, even I, resigned yet. He hadn't resigned. And I was sort of saying, like, what an immediate high and then an immediate low, like back to back, and like how you how people there were, were sort of managing that. And for, for me, I was just like, man, you know, just the emotions, then pre-Royal Rumble, and now we're through that. And like you said, stuff is still happening, including uh, I woke up this morning and I saw another Wall Street Journal article that said uh, federal authorities have been investigating sexual assault and sex trafficking allegations against Vince, according to people familiar with the investigation. Is that related to when they subpoenaed his house or when they search warrant had the search warrant? And they, I, I still think that the, I saw where they may have grabbed his phone. Even it did grab his phone. And does, it, so does that go back? Because people were not sure that what go, that, that, that goes, search warrant was for. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that goes back to the thing in, in the Observer. You know, when we go through the timeline, we have that actually, you know, the day that that happened and, or the day that they that the company released it because they did release it. And I mean, the thing that's so amazing is when you look back through the timeline and just this story again, that all of this happened before the closing of the merger. Right. And and. Our Ari, you know, um, like he, he, I mean, like, did he know the level of depravity is, that was going to be in that lawsuit? You know, my gut is no, but he knew that it was a bad situation. I mean, he knew the NDAs were already out there. Um, the search warrant to the house was already out there. I mean, the guy was playing, you know, it's like, I, I mean, his, he was playing with fire. He was really playing with fire and he got burned, but he's not really taking the heat that he deserves on this one. Um, because it's not like, you know, if it, if it all come out out of nowhere, it's one thing. But this wasn't out of nowhere. You know, he, the, the guy, Vince McMahon, was ringing the bell at the New York Stock Exchange a week ago Wednesday. Yep. Think about that. Think about that with everything that's gone down. And it's not like all the stuff that's gone down is only stuff that we found out on Thursday with a lawsuit. We've been we've known about much of this. Um, it's public, you know, story after story. He's resigned before, you know, the, everything, you know, the, the, the real depravity we just found out last week, but the, the gist of the situation we've known for a while now. And, um, you know, he, to me, I and mean, he's gotten some heat. I saw CNN was asking, you know, why did they do this and everything? Um, but, but I think that he's, you know, he's got, he's got some questions he has to answer, which he hasn't. And, um, you know, as far as other people, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't know what their what their role is to say at this point. I don't see anyone really saying stuff. I mean, it's it's very interesting how um, the reaction to this one is kind of like almost my, almost my lead mm -hmm. uh, when he resigned in uh, a couple of years ago, and the reaction to this resignation were completely different across the board. I mean, now we're at this situation where. You know, they're trying to figure out how to way to get him out of the video game and they're trying to, um, you know, which may not be possible. And, um, you know, and then try probably trying to figure out how to um, erase him from history, which is completely impossible. You can't do yeah. it, you know. Um, so it's it's a really uh, interesting and unique situation that is probably we're probably going to be hearing more about constantly. Well, they were still playing. Uh, commercials for the video game, which had his voice in it. Yes. Last weekend. Yes. Yes. Well, they can't scrub everything. You know what I mean? Um, so it's going to be, yeah, there's, there's a lot of stuff and there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of questions. That's all I could say. There's a, a lot of questions for a lot of people, um, you know, with the benefit of hindsight, which sometimes is not fair. A lot of people, 
really come off looking bad with statements that they've made, you know, um, the last year plus. I mean, people were, were you know, going to me with Nick's statements, you know, Nick Khan, um, and the stuff he said, you know, on Bill Simmons and things like that. And it's like, yes. wow, wow, you know, it's like, uh, it was, I, I never, I didn't think that those were the best in the world when he said it, but, you know, um, you know, basically we knew he was going to come back and everything like that, which certainly is uh, a contradiction based on, you know, the, the letters that would be in December and January of last year, but just, um, and you know, that story is, you know, it was a big story then, and it's even more interesting now. And, um, you know, but, but yeah, those statements, I mean, I know he was put in a weird position to answer them. But those answers today look don't look the best. That's for sure. I, I don't even know how good of a question this is, but it's just been something that's been on my mind. And it's related to just conversations that I've had with you over over the years. Now, the WWE today, I guess the second they went public and, and became a public company, they could no longer behave like the the thing that nobody cared enough about to cover for real. Yeah. Yeah. And do you think that like, because the only thing and nothing make, none of this makes sense to me in any way, but I'm trying to think of like why Vince was still so cavalier about everything that he did until in the company until just today. Like it still feels so cavalier, but is it that <laughs> mindset that nobody will take them seriously enough to cover them? I think it's more that he felt he was bulletproof um, and above it all. I don't think it was so much that nobody would, because he, you know, he knew that there would be some coverage. Now, granted, you know, it's funny because this, you know, one of the things that that's really, you know, someone even brought up to me is like, look at some of the stories in the past and like the Jimmy Snooker thing, which was like a nothing news story at the time. Um, you know, the guy is, you know, his girlfriend dies on a Tuesday and he's got this story that changes six times and you know the police you know i can't believe the police would have dropped it but more so he was wrestling on friday you know mm -hmm. and and like that could never happen today um and um you know there's just a lot of other stories that in today's climate you know would have been um you know a lot worse uh than than they were because yeah before they were a public company nobody wanted to cover them and on this one i mean you know i saw nbc news abc news you know today alone you know wall street journal you know cnn fox news you know everyone is is covering it i'm hearing from from people you know for to be on these shows and everything so i mean i know it's like a big um you know it's a big story yeah uh, so going back through that timeline, two things, a hundred things stand out, but two things yeah. that really, really stood out to me. The first one was, and, and I, you know, that's been like a year and a half since I think all of this stuff had been started to get reported. The first one was basically Vince coming back and Stephanie saying how great it is for everyone that he's back. And then she leaves like five days later. Yeah. Yeah, like that that was pretty alarming. And then that's yeah. not too that's it's not that long after she led the live audience in, in a thank you, Vince chant. Right. Yes. Which just really showed the audience to, to be poor uh, in in yeah. everything. And yeah. Yeah. Set I mean, them it, up to look like goofballs to me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, you know, I mean, it's it it is amazing. And, you know, you're still getting a lot of the tribalism, you know, stuff because uh, out of this. But that's, I guess, you know, pretty tone deaf. But the um, but, but yeah, the um, the Stephanie thing is really interesting, especially because, you know, she did leave, you know, whatever it was. Obviously, it had to do with Vince coming back and, um, you know, basically being, you know, removed from her job by her father when she had done a great job while he was gone and and he was a uh, you know he was going to be a negative to the company being there but he's still there and it's like he took it from you know his own daughter and um the ceo position or co-ceo position and uh you know that you know if she had failed in that position it'd be one thing but she hadn't and the company was doing better and um you know so but yeah the whole thing um it is a weird it is a weird thing 
you know, and again, that, that fan reaction, um, it looks really bad now. I mean, it looked bad then. It looked bad then too, because those Wall Street Journal stories had just come out and he came mm -hmm. out as a big conquering hero, you know? Um, and obviously, you know, there's been more and more evidence that's worse and worse. And, um, yeah, I don't know of any other, um, I don't know of any other, I don't know if, if another fan base would have done that. I mean, it's, it's hard to say, but it was, uh, you know, it wasn't the worst wrestling fan base story because I, you know, I mean, the worst was still the Bobby Shane, 1975, Bobby Shane is in a, a plane accident, um, you know, on a Thursday and he's supposed to wrestle in, uh, you know, flying from Miami to uh, Tampa. The plane goes down and he dies in, in the plane crash. And Tampa, what the, the deal was in those days is they would wrestle um, Wednesday night in Miami. They would drive or fly to Tampa for an afternoon one hour television show and then cut all their localized interviews. And then they would go to Jacksonville for the big show Thursday night in Jacksonville. And, um, you know, obviously, um, at the Jacksonville Coliseum after he had died that afternoon and the, and, and the news did not travel, you know, the, the way, like now everybody would probably go into the building. No, but then nobody knew, you know, the world, the news didn't travel like that. And, you know, they announced the building, you know, Bobby Shane, you know, died in a in a um you know in a plane accident and everybody cheered you know bobby shane was was one of the top heels in the company and i remember like even though people hated the heels and everything like that i remember wrestlers that were on that show just being like absolutely sickened by that crowd reaction and that that to me that's still the worst one but the vince one is probably you know maybe the second worst i don't know there was a quote there's a quote in the observer about triple H from somebody in the business. And it makes me wonder that if you are TKO and you are looking to show that you are doing your due diligence and you're doing your investigations, like there are a lot of people who, you know, are going to be questioned about what they know, what they don't know and their own practices in that environment. And I know that is going to be what it takes to clean up the the whole environment there. But then, you know, we're also sort of into the salaciousness of people's private lives. Mm -hmm. And that is seems like it, it is it, that information could be coming out. I can't imagine anybody close to him is unconcerned about how much information is going to be dug up on them yeah i mean nobody's perfect in this world and um yeah there's probably you know but it just it's a question of like what should be the right thing and you know at the end of the day that's ari's you know decision on what he wants he's not going to find perfect people a uh, running any company and, and and he's been around the block a long time he's not as you know he knows that i mean look you know he did the thing with dana you know although this you know obviously comparing what dana did as bad as it was and even being on camera to this is ridiculous you know it's like not even a comparison point but um you know like did people know the level of the depravity and i don't know that people did you know, other than, I guess, Laurinaitis did, you know, since he was part of it. Um, to an extent, Lesnar, maybe. I don't know. Did they know? I mean, did they know that that Vince McMahon was having, you know, relationships or presumed he was having relationships with um, women that worked in the company? I mean, that goes back, you know, who knows how long, but it's a long time. Um, and that by today's standards is bad by the standards of, um, before, I mean, it would still be kind of bad. Um, but it was, you know, would they, you know, I mean, there's so much stuff there. And then when you're talking there, there you know, it's such a sordid story. And, and like, again, I think there are many people who knew aspects of it. I don't know anyone who knew the depths of it to that degree. Um, but, like, what should they have done? Should they have gone to human resources? Well, that's, un for un you're going to go to re human resources on Vince McMahon. You know, that's death um, to your to your career. So it's like, I don't know. Um, 
I don't know exactly. And again, I mean, but they have to do a thorough investigation of everyone and see what happens. And, um, I don't know. I don't know how it turns out if, if, you know, I mean, Mike, I still have this gut feeling that, that they've gone with the idea that Vince is gone. Lauren Ice is gone. Brock's probably gone at least for a while. Um, and that's all we need to do. And I don't know if that's all they need to do, but I think that that's from their standpoint, I think that's what they hope is the turnout is like, they're out of the company, you know, I mean, it's certainly what, you know, again, Netflix, Slim Jims, you know, that's, that was satisfactory enough for both of them. You know, it's like, Hey, he's out of the company. Um, you know, as far as other people in the company and, and all that, um, man, I just don't know. I don't know what, what they're going to uncover. Um, and what they uncover can be taken in many different ways if they uncover everything, you know? So, um, it's kind of like a wait and see on everything. I know people want to rush to judgment on a lot of stuff and some people are mad that people are rushing to judgment on Vince, but again, like the text alone, you know, yeah. forget about, forget about the lawsuit, the text alone. And the fact that Lauren Itis, of course, Lauren Itis gave him up because Lauren Itis was, was, you know, like number one, he's, he's being sued in a major suit. Number two, there's a criminal investigation going on. And if, um, you know, if she's able to uh, convince people that that what she was saying in that complaint is accurate and true, then he looks, you know, I mean, that, that, we're talking about, you know, rape, sexual assault right there. And, you know, that's it's it's best. You know, I think that he knows and everyone knows that, you know, they're they're out to get Vince McMahon, so to speak. Yeah. And, you know, John Lauren Ice can can turn and, and evidently um, did very quickly. And, um, they, you know, they the, also, they also, he was the one who was made to be the scapegoat immediately, which I'm, and yeah, rightfully that's right. so, but yeah. he was the one that they immediately acted on when that story came up. Yeah. Cause he wasn't Vince. If it was anyone else in the company, um, it would have been the same thing as Laurenitis. The only one that would have been protected was Vince. And, and, and he was to a degree. I mean, he was, um, the interesting thing, again, when you go through the timeline is that Laurenitis had a claim against him back in 2012. And he was demoted, whether it was for that or not. Um, but he was demoted from from head of talent relations and just made an agent. They never fired him, which was funny because when he was demoted as head of talent relations, a lot of people thought that he would be let go. Vince kept him for whatever reason. And that's a really interesting thing when you look at the career of Laurenitis. Um, you know, Laurenitis was a guy, you know, some people um, just just for his background, obviously, you know, people know he was a wrestler, Johnny Ace. He was a, a pretty big star in all Japan and very powerful in all Japan. He was the, um, you know, he, he, he was not the top foreigner, you know, Stan Hansen was the top foreigner, but he was the most influential. Um, he was very close with Baba, very close with Matoko, Baba's wife. Um, and so he got a lot of experience kind of his management. And then in WCW, when his career ended, when he, and, you know, he chose to end his career, he got a job with Bischoff with WCW as an agent. And because of all the stuff he learned in all Japan, um, he got very high marks as an agent. You know, I mean, when he came in, um, the match finishes were, were more Japanese oriented and better. And a lot of their talent was, was very high on, on Laurinaitis in that role. Um, went to WWE after WCW folded, WWE took him, Jim Ross took him and made him his assistant head of talent relations. His job there was to be the bad guy, you know, like Jim Ross had been the bad yeah. guy, you know, up until that point, you know, when someone needed to be fired, Jim Ross would fire him and the talent would go, Vince loved me, but that goddamn, that goddamn Jim Ross. So when Laurenitis was there and somebody needed to be fired, JR would call Laurenitis to fire him and it became, you know, like. JR loved me and Vince loved me, but that <laughs> asshole, John Laurinaitis. So he was in that position. The entire time, the idea was for John Laurinaitis to take over from JR when JR was getting older. And, and it was known JR wanted to move from Connecticut to Oklahoma. He, you know, paid his dues. He wanted to, you know, JR wanted to slow down, watch his football. You know, it's funny. Uh, you know, we're talking about JR now. Watch his football, stay with the company, stay in, stay as an announcer, you know, like that. But he didn't want that all encompassing, you know, role. Mm -hmm. And so they were talking about, um, you know, when it would happen. And it was known, everyone knew that it was going to happen someday. And then one day, I mean, the, the ironic part of it is, is that 
JR got demoted, you know, with and replaced by John Laurinaitis, which was going to happen, but not on his terms. You know, he was still right. thinking he was going to work, you know, whatever it was, maybe another year, maybe whatever. And then during that period, one of the key jobs that had talent relations, I'm going on a tangent, but it all plays into it at the end, is doing payoffs. And very quickly, it became clear that that John did not know how to do that. So JR was one of the, you know, secretly was still doing the payoffs when Laurenitis was supposed to be doing that. And I know that Levesque, who was, you know, always gunning for a high position as well, you know, his thing was is kind of like, you know, what's he doing in this position when you're doing, you know, one of the key aspects of it and, yeah. and all that. And so Laurenitis then gets replaced whether it's due to this thing, it's at the same time, or due to something else. I mean, again, there were people who, um, you know, he ended up making, as, as anyone in that position does, you know, J.J. Dillon had enemies, J.R. had enemies, um, Patterson had enemies. You know, that position is one where the talent is going to resent you, and Johnny was in that thing. So, um, you know, Johnny had his enemies, and then he got replaced by Levesque, who actually, you know, when he was in that position, really didn't make the enemies that the others did, which is a real, um, I guess it's really good. It shows he's good at, at a certain aspect of that job, but then he got demoted and Lauren Ice was brought back into that role. And, you know, around the time all of this happened and John's, um, wife is going through, you know, a horrible medical ordeal at the same time while this is, you know, you know, you know, in, in the approximate period, a little bit, mm -hmm. actually, her, her ordeal was a little bit before, but it, you know, she wasn't fully recovered and it's just a, oh my God, it's a, it's a mouthful when you go through everything. And then you think about like the big picture of, of all of this. Um, but yeah, it's, it's such a detailed sorted thing. Hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.